Jenny Nickel was a woman who disappeared sometime on or after the 30th of June 2005 from the Richmond area, North Yorkshire, England. In February 2008, David Hodgson was convicted of her murder despite the lack of a body, crime scene or body deposition site. Hodgson was jailed for life, with a recommendation that he serve at least 18 years, after being convicted on DNA and fake text messaging evidence which involved his traveling many miles so as to appear that Nickel was still alive and camping some distance away from her hometown. Disappearance The Nickel family lived in Richmond, North Yorkshire, where Nickel worked at the local supermarket and played guitar in pub bands. Nickel's father was in the British Army and the family settled in Richmond when the eldest son also joined the army and was posted to Catterick. On the 30th of June 2005, Nickel told her parents that she was spending the night with friends, which was not uncommon for her and took items with her that suggested she was going on a camping trip. She left the house at 6 p.m., and that was the last confirmed sighting of Nickel. Nickel was reported missing by her parents on the 4th of July 2005 after they had had no contact with her over the previous days and her car, a white Rover 214i, was found parked in the Holly Hill pub in Richmond. Nine days later, North Yorkshire police interviewed David Hodgson, who was 45 at the time of Nichols' disappearance, was a married father of two, and who had been Nichols' boyfriend since she was 14 years old, though he maintained that their relationship was not sexual until she was 16 and that they had had sex only five times. Hodgson's two daughters had both attended the same school as Nickel, St. Francis Xavier School in Richmond. Around the time of the affair starting, it was said that there was some name-calling of Nickel and eventually an assault in which the police were finally involved. During his first police interview, Hodgson denied having an affair with Nickel and also denied anything to do with her disappearance. The next day, Nichols' mobile phone was switched on and messages were sent which led her family and the police to believe she was alive and well. The text messages were later revealed to have been sent from locations as far afield as Carlisle in Cumbria and Jadberg in the Scottish borders. Later, the authenticity of these messages were put into doubt by the police when they stated in November 2005 that the inquiry had turned from a disappearance into a murder investigation. At the end of July 2005, police found David Hodgson in a hut near to Hudswell. He had taken an overdose of pills and wine. In later police interviews, Hodgson admitted that he and Nickel were lovers, but that their affair had ended 12 months earlier. Whilst there was some initial hope with the mobile phone messages, and Nickel went to both locations to search for her daughter, police still maintained an active search for Nickel, which lasted the rest of the summer of 2005 and involved searching over 150 areas, septic tanks at farms, and also utilized soldiers from Catterick Garrison to help out. During the investigation, it was revealed that Nickel had also started seeing Hodgson's elder brother, Robert, in the weeks prior to her disappearance. Robert Hodgson was unaware of Nichols being linked with his younger brother, despite the two brothers erecting the Hudson Sandbeck plantation that critical evidence was found at during and after the police searches. In December 2005, Anne Nickel appeared on the BBC program Crime Watch to appeal for help in finding her daughter and the conviction of her killer. In May 2007, police formally charged David Hodgson, and he appeared that same month in North Allerton Magistrates Court where he was remanded in custody until a trial early in 2008. Conviction The case came to court in January 2008 where Hodgson denied taking Nickel to any of his ramshackle huts hidden in the Sandbeck Plantation near to the E6136 Road, south of Richmond. DNA evidence contradicted this as did the discovery of Nichols' nightdress, teddy bear and cassette player at the same location. Police believe that Hodgson became jealous of his brother's relationship with Nickel and he killed her on the night she disappeared. Hodgson's elder daughter stated in court that Nickel was seen alive in Richmond two days after her disappearance and had been staying with Robert. Robert Hodgson denied this claim and stated in court he had not seen Nickel for some time. At court, 
the prosecution were able to establish that the text messages sent to family and friends days after her disappearance were not in the style that Nickel would typically compose. The prosecution also submitted evidence that Hodgson had hired a car on two separate occasions, the 9 and the 14th of July 2005, and the distances traveled on those days fit the distances both there and back from Richmond to Carlisle and Richmond to Jedburgh. The dates also married up with the dates that the messages were sent from Nichols' phone. The prosecution also said that David Hodgson was an intensely jealous man who was angry about Nichols' new relationship with his brother, Robert. In February 2008, David Hodgson was found guilty of Nichols' murder at Teesside Crown Court. Aftermath in September 2008, the Council for the Registration of Forensic Practitioner recognized forensic linguistics as a speciality. The UK government body, which strives to promote excellence in forensic practice, recognized that evidence given in cases like those against Hodgson and Stuart Campbell, the murderer of Danielle Jones, whose body, like Nichols, has never been found, had a significant impact on each case. In November 2009, a coroner ruled that Nickel was dead and that her death was judged to be an unlawful killing. See also list of murder convictions without a body list of people who disappeared. References External links Detailed linguistic comparison between Hodgson and Nickel texts BBC graphic comparing styles in the text messages.